What's up guys, back again with another video. So over the past week I've built a new dedicated PC purely for video rendering and intensive CPU processing. The tech community on YouTube is going crazy over cheap processors and many enthusiasts believe that Skylake and Haswell hasn't really given us the gains we've wanted in CPUs and I tend to agree. Now I have my gaming rig which is more than capable Intel i7 4790K but it only contains 4 cores. If you want something that has a lot more cores but you don't want to spend $1200 on an 8 core CPU alone then enter the Intel Xeon E5 2670. These little beauties of a CPU came out in 2012 and were just continued in 2015. Featuring a 2011 Sandy Bridge architecture, it contains 8 cores and 16 hardware threads running at 2.6 GHz with a 3.3 GHz turbo clock. It also comes with a huge 20 meg of level 3 cache, and the best part, they only cost $75, which is an absolute steal. So how do these CPUs actually perform in 2016? Well, let's find out. Now this is my video editing server PC that I put together. Now I ended up buying two of the E52670s from eBay for a total of $150, an ASRock EP2C602 dual CPU motherboard. Now to house a dual CPU server motherboard, you will need a full tower ATX case. So I picked up a Fantex Enthu Pro case in white, along with two Cooler Master Hyper 212 Evos. I was going to use the Noctua i4 coolers, but Amazon was taking too long to ship them out. For the power supply, I went with an EVGA Supernova 750W G2. If you're looking at a dual CPU system, when you pick out a power supply, you need to make sure that it comes with two CPU connectors. Now to round out the PC, although the ASRock motherboard has built-in onboard display, for the graphics card I cheated a little bit and pulled out one of my GTX 970s from my other machine. For the boot drive, I installed a spare 120GB Intel SSD, and for the D drive, I installed a 2TB Western Digital 7200RPM hard drive. Now all this cost me around $650 in parts, but this is something that could be a lot cheaper if you use pre-owned parts. The biggest expense has to be the motherboard. Most LGA 2011 socket motherboards are pretty pricey. You're looking at around $200 for a single CPU board, and $300 plus for a dual CPU. But considering for around $450 you can get a 32 hardware thread dual CPU and motherboard setup, it's a pretty decent price. Okay, so let's do some benchmarks. And as a test, I'm going to use the dual E52670s with 32GB of RAM and a GTX 970 as I mentioned, and I'm running Windows 10. With the 16 core 32 thread monster, we're getting 1916 as our score in Cinebench R15. On the Intel 4790K, we're getting a score of about 850. The dual Intel Xeon processors are outperforming the i7 4790K in 3D Mark Firestrike scoring 10,511. Next up is the Unigen Heaven benchmark. We're running at 1080p on ultra quality with tessellation to extreme. The dual Xeons net us 52.1 frames per second and the Intel i7 4790K gives us 56.9. It's a pretty close race overall. And this is probably the benchmark that most people are interested in. This is Adobe Premiere Pro rendering a 4K video which is 3 minutes and 16 seconds long. Now in this particular part of the rendering I should mention that I've sped up the video and you can see that all the CPUs are being utilized while the rendering is occurring which is a good sign. The time is 5 minutes and 42 seconds to render a 3 minute 15 second 4K video in Premiere Pro. So let's try with the Intel i7 4790K. Now running the exact same test, we see that the 4K render completes in 5 minutes and 27 seconds on the 4790K setup. Now to be totally honest with you guys, I expected the dual Xeons to smoke the pants off the 4790K in Premiere Pro. This was certainly the biggest surprise to me. I did some reading up on this, and it turns out the Premiere Pro in some instances performs worse when there's too many cores. Sounds silly, I know, but there are pages and pages of discussions about diminishing returns and lackluster performance with too many threads. 
Now one test I have been advised to look at is turning off one of the CPUs and trying again with 8 cores or 16 hardware threads. Having said that, performance in my test so far is neck and neck with the 4790K, which is certainly not a bad thing, but I can't help but being a little disappointed at this, especially after the lightning fast in the bench cores. Alright guys, so what did you think of my dual CPU Z on E52670 build? It's a pretty cool system, but given the fact I put about as much money into this as I would with a budget or to middle level gaming PC, there's a couple of questions you really need to ask yourself. Is this something that's interesting to you? Now the first question is, are you a gamer first and then everything else second? If you're a gamer and that's all you're interested in, then I can't recommend this set setup for you. If you're involved in heavy server side processing stuff, video rendering, Photoshop, the Adobe Creative Cloud stuff, music stuff, for example, Pro Tools, Reaper, Cubase, all that heavy lifting stuff, as well as Microsoft Office, you use Excel or Microsoft databases, for example, Microsoft SQL Server, or development software like Visual Studio 2015, for instance, that uses a lot of CPU cores, then this is ideal for you guys. And the cool part is, even if you want to do play games on this type of machine, then you still can. As you've seen with some of the benchmarks, it holds up really well. Now in general, it's a little slower than an i7-4790K as far as gaming performance goes, but it's really no slouch at all. In fact, today I've been playing Tom Clancy's The Division with high settings, and it's almost locked at 60 frames per second, with there's a couple of frame rate drops here and there. But overall, the game runs really, really well. But I am pretty happy with this setup, guys. This is my secondary PC that I'm going to use for video rendering, music creation, as well as software development, which are the things I really wanted to do away from my gaming system, which is really purely for games. All right, guys, well, I'm gonna wrap it up for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. As always, don't forget to rate, comment, and subscribe, and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Bye for now.